Despite being one of the most significant battles in British history, alongside the Battle of Hastings, the largely forgotten Battle of Medway was an instrumental moment during the Roman invasion of Britain in 43 AD, when legions under the command of Vespasian brought civilization to the island nation, and the country soon to be established would never be the same again. Prior to the Roman invasion of the British Isles, what is now England and Wales was occupied by numerous different tribes, with ten tribes being the most significant for the time. The Iceni of Norfolk and North Suffolk, the Trinovants that lived in South Suffolk and Essex, the Catuvalorni that resided on the banks of the Thames, the Atrobates who lived south of the Thames in South Berkshire, North East Hampshire, Surrey and West Kent, the Regini of Sussex and East Hampshire, the Cantiachi of East Kent, the Belgae of Mid Hampshire, Mid Wiltshire, North Somerset and South Gloucestershire, the Duratrigues of the New Forest, South Wiltshire, Dorset, South Somerset and East Devon, the remote Dumnanai who lived in the wilds of West Devon and Cornwall, and the Dubony, who lived in the Lower Severn Valley. Of these tribes, perhaps the most notable was the Iceni, whose capital was in the ancient town of Colchester, this tribe having had direct interactions with the Romans during 54 BC, when Julius Caesar mounted an invasion of the British Isles, during which Caesar, supporting the Trinovants against the threats of the Catuvaluni, was able to push his forces west into South Hertfordshire, before drafting a peace treaty with those British tribes he had interacted with, the Romans eventually leaving the country after two months and returning to their colony of Gaul across the English Channel. Further attempts to reinvade Britain being mounted by the notorious Emperor Caligula during 40 AD, though his desire to conquer Britain was curtailed by a mutiny among his troops, who refused to navigate the churning seas of the frigid English Channel that was a stark contrast to the comparatively warm and calm waters of the Mediterranean. Caligula's failure to mount a successful conquest of Britain being one of the many reasons behind his assassination a year later at the hands of the Praetorian Guard. Caligula was subsequently replaced by his uncle Claudius in 41 AD, the more statesman like Claudius seeing the need to establish his prestige in Rome by undertaking a major military achievement known as a triumph, rejecting a proposed invasion of Mauritania, which was, at the time, the northern tips of Morocco and western Algeria, by instead leading a conquest of Britain, seeking to acquire the country's rich surplus of grain, together with its metals of lead, iron, tin, copper, gold and silver, as well as its hunting dogs, pearls, animal skins, and natives who could be sold as slaves. The situation in Britain, at the time, being one of great division following the death of the powerful Cunobeline, or head of the Catuvalani tribe, during 41 AD, who was succeeded as tribal leader by his elder son, Togodumnus, while his younger son, Caraticus, moved away and conquered almost all of the area south of the Thames, demanding allegiance from the Duboni, the result being large swathes of southern England being ruled by two kings who both held a deep dislike of the Roman Empire. One of the tribes conquered by Caraticus was the Atrobates during 42 AD, the outcomes of which led its king, Verica, a longtime ally of Rome, to flee to the Emperor Claudius to seek support, reporting that Britain was in a state of rebellion and thus gave him the excuse needed to mount an invasion, thereby securing his triumph, command of the legion sent to conquer Britain, being Aulus Plautius Silvanus, who had previously been governor of the Roman province of Illicrium, a large area comprising some of present-day Romania, Serbia, Albania, Bosnia, Croatia and Hungary, and therefore had great experience when it came to provisioning forces using sea and river transport, a tactic that would be essential during the invasion of Britain. While Servius Galba, future emperor of Rome after the death of Nero in AD 68, served as Plautius's deputy, the Roman army mustering in the vicinity of what is now Bologna in France, and comprised four legions consisting of 5,200 men and ten cohorts each, the first cohort being the elite, and had five centuries, each of 160 men, while the other nine cohorts had six centuries, each of 80 men, with each century being divided into ten sections of eight men each, each legion commanded by a legate and was assisted by six tribunes. Three of the legions partaking in the invasion formed part of the legions of the Rhine frontier in Germanica, and included the armies of Augusta, who came from Strasbourg, Gemina from Mainz, and Valeria from Cologne, while the fourth legion of Hispana came from Pannonia in Hungary all of these legions being extremely well experienced when it came to the use of boats for movement and resupply, the main legions being supported by various auxiliary troops that included cavalry, archers, bridge builders, and the Batavians of Holland, who specialized in making river crossings, the total invasion force comprising some 45,000 men that consisted mostly of light infantry, heavy infantry, and cavalry, half of the army being the main fighting force, while the other half was made up of auxiliaries that would take the lead role in the campaign scouting out enemy positions, and then taking the front line in any fighting. To dispel the earlier fear of the rough waters of the English Channel, 
As it so led to the mutiny and ultimate ruin of Caligula's campaign three years prior, Claudius sent his senior minister, the ex-slave Narcissus, to accompany the army at Bologna, who was able to persuade the legions to embark and undertake the voyage to Britain. The Roman troops landing on English shores at Richborough in Kent, an area of gently sloping beaches that had been used by Julius Caesar during his scouting trips to Britain prior to his own invasion 97 years earlier. Richborough also being strategically important in that a small hill above the beach provided a superb lookout for sentries across the adjacent countryside that would easily alert them of enemy movements, while also allowing for a military advance towards London to be shielded by the protection of the south bank of the River Thames, thus forcing the British tribes to defend on a limited north-south basis as provided only by the intermediate River Stour and River Medway, the Thames also acting as a means of consistent resupply from Roman vessels. The Romans ultimately landed in three waves so as to reduce logistical problems and the need for a gigantic shipbuilding program so as to transport all 45,000 troops in a single instance. Their invasion being conducted with little to no resistance from the British tribes, as their only intelligence was gossip being brought by traders from across the channel, which indicated that the Romans would invade in April, but did in fact take place during the autumn, meaning that those tribesmen that had gathered on the southern coast of England to repel the invasion force would have largely dispersed out of impatience or a depletion of food supplies, the Roman advance through Kent being largely uncontested, as the British tribes refused to engage the legions in close-quarter fighting, instead retreating into the forests and marshlands in the hope that the Romans, who were more used to battle in open countryside, would follow them into environmental conditions that would better suit the British fighting style. In response, Togodumnus and his brother Caraticus created an army of up to 150,000 tribesmen to stop the Roman advance, with skirmishes at Canterbury being used to delay the legions and allow the British kings to amass their main force against the Romans, preparing their main defensive position on the west bank of the River Medway, approximately four miles south of what is now Rochester. Auxiliary forces leading the charge by scouting out enemy defences and dispersing pockets of resistance, while Plautius, noting the width and tidal conditions of the Medway at Rochester, directed his forces south to the narrowest available location, sending across first, under cover of darkness, his famous division of Batavians, who were renowned for their ability to cross rivers in full equipment, attacking the British initially from the rear so as to disable their supply of horses that were necessary in pulling chariots, the main weapon of the tribesmen that not only proved intimidating to the enemy, but were also instrumental in keeping their troops easily mobile. With their supply of chariots now largely sabotaged by the Batavians, the British force could not move swiftly along the banks of the Medway, and thus meant they were spread thin along the entire course of the riverbank due to their inability to determine where the Roman attack may come from. Plautius assigning a single legion under the command of Vespasian, who would also become future emperor of Rome in 69 AD, to undertake an initial crossing of the river, so as to determine the strength of their British adversaries, his legion crossing the river at a narrow bend located to the east of what is now Snodland where the course of the Medway meanders sharply as it travels from south to north. This initial thrust establishing a defensive beachhead on the western shore at dusk, and thus allowing Plautius to send forward a further two legions, comprising 5,200 men each. The beachhead, as supported by additional troops fording the river, repelling sustained British attacks all through the night and into the next morning, as Togodumnus and Caraticus moved their thinly spread forces against the Roman intruders. Regardless of the British efforts, the Romans, once a suitable force had been brought across the Medway, broke out under Vespasian's command to the north so as to capture further positions on the west bank of the river, focusing their assault specifically on the British fortifications at Halling, Vespasian advancing just short of the village before being relieved by legions under the command of Galba, who subsequently conquered this location and drove the British back west, the Romans rapidly moving to establish a bridge across the river slightly north of the location where Vespasian had undertaken his original landing and would have comprised a walkway rested upon floating boats, the last stand of the British during the Battle of Medway being at a prominent area of high ground located south of Halling, during which King Togodomnus was killed, while Caraticus, now king of the Catuvalani, retreated north, crossed the Thames in the vicinity of what is now London Bridge, where there was a pre-existing ferry, and regrouped in preparation for future battles against the victorious Romans. With the British put to flight, the Romans quickly gained a foothold and began to establish a new colony that would last 400 years, and while there would be future battles as the legions moved north and west to conquer further territories and subdue additional tribes, the overwhelming victory of the Roman forces in toppling the British resistance at Medway was one of the pivotal points in the history of the United Kingdom, in that civilization and citizenship was introduced to a country once broken up by tribes, while the Britain that followed the eventual departure of the Romans would be one far more unified than it had ever been before, 
and sow the seeds of what would ultimately become a power that created its own empire that would far outstrip that of their ancient conquerors.